Okay, so on to example number five, which I wrote wrong here. So on example number five, now what we're doing is we're given a function f of x, and what we wanna do is decompose this into two other functions, h of x and g of x. And again, decompose is basically like the reverse operation of composition. If you can think of f of x, think of it as a combination of two functions, one function plugged into another function. So how could we write this? And I think, uh, I don't think I wrote this in there, but how could we rewrite this as the composition, I'll have to add this in there, of h of g of x? So basically what I'm asking is, how can we rewrite this where we plug in the g function into the h of x function? And you might say, well, we don't have a g of x or of h of x. You're right, so we need to create a g of x or an h of x where when we apply g h of g of x, we end up getting f of x. So that's exactly what this question is kind of asking. That's what we're looking for. And you can have a lot of fun with this. There is infinite many answers to this. Um, or you can be kind of lazy and just pick like some very basic ones. So that's why I kind of did two um, unique functions, just so you know, a lot of students will look at this and they always do, oh, I got the you know, easy answers, um, you know, which is fine. But you know, sometimes you, you to kind of get a little creative and kind of think of like some different ways. So um, let's kind of go over some basic ones. I'll just kind of do it simple. And then, you know, I'll kind of throw in some, you know, ones that maybe you didn't think about, um, you know, and I'm sure you can uh, provide some different uh, answers as well. Like, you know, as again, there's infinite many solutions here. So how can I write f of x as a composition of h of g of x? Well, what if I had h of x as the square root of x? And then I said g of x equaled 3x minus 1. And just think about that. If I take g of x and plug it into h of x, I'm going to get f of x, right? I mean, that's, you can see, you know, exactly how that, you know, works. Another kind of basic one that you could think about is, say, like h of x, let's just say h of x equals x. And then g of x equals this exact same thing, or x equals all of f of x. Right? Fairly basic example, because if you plug g of x into h of x, uh, you're going to again get f of x, right? So, um, you know, those these are pretty like two non-creative ways um, to doing this, but hopefully you can at least see the idea and how it makes sense. And then I think I, um, yeah, I kind of get a little creative here in my next one. So we'll do kind of a non-creative and then we'll do a creative. So in this one, a non-creative way would just say, well, let's make f of x, or not f of x, Let's make h of x equal um, 1 over x. And then if I were to plug in 2x squared minus x in for my denominator, I would have f of x. So therefore, g of x is going to equal 2x squared minus x. Okay? So that's one example. Uh, we could do another example here is let's have a little fun. Let's play around some numbers, make sure it works. So in this example, I said, let's make uh, h of x equal 1 over, let's see what I picked, 2x minus the square root of x. And then let's make g of x equal x squared, right? So now let's think. Let's make sure that this works. If I were to plug in x squared in for x, I would get 2x squared minus the square root of x squared, which is just going to be x. So therefore, that'd give me that exact same example. And again, you could have, you know, you could have more fun with this, you know, picking some numbers. You know, you could take the square root of and multiply and fractions and so forth. Um, you know, so have a little fun. You know, think it, you can think of some creative ways and also some non-creative ways to get this done. Um, so next one, f of x equals 1 half x, you know, plus 3. Um, we could do this you know, a couple of different ways. We could plug in x and then plug in that function, or we could also just say, let's do uh, green. Let's say f of x or h of x equals 1 half x plus 3. And then really a non-creative way would just say, all right, well, let's make g of x then equal x. Like, okay, congrats. Like, yes, that works. Plug g of x into h of x, and you get f of x. Good job. Um, another one we could do is, like, you know, have a little fun with that fraction. h of x, let's say h of x equals x plus 1. So now, what would I need to do to plug into x that would give me 1 half x plus 3? Well, obviously, for g of x, I'm running out of space, I'll put it here. Obviously, for, um, for f of x, I'm going to need that 1 half x. So if I plug in 1 half x in for x, I'd have 1 half x plus 1. Well, I need to get this to be plus 3. So therefore, I'll just add a 2 there. 
Okay, so that's kind of like your basic idea here of example number five is we're basically just looking at um, a function as a composition of two or more functions and then identifying what those two possible functions, you know, could be. And that's really all we're doing because there's infinite many options. Just looking at what are some possible two functions that you could do to obtain your f of x.